So this video is going to explore what it means to do a practice or an exercise. So, um, and no self, no problem. One of the comments I get is that people really enjoy the exercises. And there's a good reason for this, because as I say so often, you can't solve a thinking problem with more thinking. It's doing, it's action. Uh, and of course, that's why we have yoga and meditation and Tai Chi and Qigong and, and it's a, such a long list of exercises rather than academic uh, intellectual pursuits. Um, even those uh, pursuits that do use words uh, are very clear that the words are just a pointer and not to get too tied into thinking too much. And that's why we have things like the, um, uh, the Zen Koan, which you know uses thinking to collapse the thinking process altogether. So here's a practice with no self, no problem. Um, and then I'm going to add on to it. But the initial practice, I, I called it something like how many cells in a day. And one of the things behind the self illusion is to uh, use fiction as a sort of glue that can bind things together. Um, so in this practice, you get up with the intention of noticing how often the self that is just assumed to be continuous and unchanging, you notice how often it changes. And so you could, when you get good at this, you, you may actually notice that it, it can change very whimsically uh, within minutes or within seconds. And so you start off as your work self and then a good song comes on the radio and then you're your happy self and then you get stuck in traffic and your frustrated self or depressed, you know, and they didn't, then you go to work. And sometimes when you're talking with someone, there's another self that comes in. And even when third person entering the room, then all of a sudden this, this self subtly changes. And so there's this continuous flow of selves throughout the day. And so many of us will say, well, those are just changes in mood. You know, I'm the self behind the self. And you can play that trick. That's a good one. But you may also start to notice the self behind the self and that it also will change very randomly throughout the day. And the purpose of the exercise is to show, look, this, this is just so um, continuously changing. There's nothing uh, constant. There's no stable self behind any of it. Well, there's no stable self behind it. But in the second part of the exercise, so you, I think it's really good to do that for a day. Practice it and get kind of good at it. It can be really fun. Uh, entertaining, I should say. Um, but then you can enter the same exact practice and then start to notice what isn't changing. And, it, and the, the quality that is consistent isn't a personality. It isn't... Um, part of an identity. It, it, it isn't part of a uh, something that can be easily labeled or put into some mental box. But what you will notice when you uh, start, say, the second day, and you get good and you say, well, I know a lot of these selves are going to come and go, and I'm just going to kind of watch them, you know, like leaves kind of uh, flowing down a river. But today what I'm going to do is also focus on what isn't changing. And it's a little bit more advanced, but what you, and again, I'm just using the word you here, but what is noticeable is that there's a quality that isn't changing. There's a quality that is consistent. This is that, so this, this is the I am presence. Um, but it's always I am and then blankness. And so you don't fill it in. And so when you're playing the game of selves, you know, I am professor, I am, you know, the, it always completes the sentence with some sort of identity. When you start to watch, okay, well, what isn't changing? But become aware of what is constant. And of course, it has no personality. It has no identity. It is literally just the I am. 